with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to Holy Cross Lutheran Church. We pray God's blessing upon our time together today. And as has become our latest custom here, we will have a brief uh, announcement from the chairman of the call committee. Good morning. Good morning. The first announcement is actually about the church picnic. Um, as you know, next week we're going to have our church picnic, as we used to have years and years ago. The committee needs to have an idea of how many people will be there so that they know how much food to purchase. So if you'll please take a moment in the fellowship hall, either at the kitchen or at the back table, and sign up for the picnic next Sunday at noon. The other issue I want to talk to you about was um, what I've been threatening two weeks now is getting the pastoral survey out. Pastoral survey in its written form is in the back. We picked them up today. We'll be collecting them for two weeks. You can also go online, which is the preferred method because instead of having one of the committees count all the numbers up, the computer will actually do it for us if you go online. That would be the preferred method. It's on our website under Member Resources. Member Resources is the password protected site. Almost all of the call information will be on the password protected site. And all of you remember the password protected site, right? Of course, you warden, our previous pastor, before Pastor Pepper, capital J, O R G N, no spaces, and the year he was called, 2002. Hey, if you forget, ask your neighbor. It's out there, so everyone has it. I think we just recorded it for quite a lot. Okay? If you prefer to have a written copy, there's some back here. Again, we will be collecting these for two weeks. Two things. One, if you go online, you'll actually get a copy of what you filled out sent back to you. Um, and in 2010, when we did preparing for a new pastor after Pastor Gordon, the congregation did this same thing then. We have that data. And at one point in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about what changes have happened over this the course of the Pastor course activity. Okay, if you have any questions, anytime about the call, contact myself, any of the call committee, Kim Munsford, Carly Yates, Jerome Perkinall, um, Walt Wismar, Pam and Dennis Davidson. Thank you. Oh, hold on a second. How <laughs> <laughs> to fill out the form. Apparently there's some confusion about the form from our own committee. So there's 32, about 32 possible uh, expectation sheets. Such things as, is older adult ministry important? Is family ministry important? How do you fill this out? Every single one of the 32 or 33 items needs to have a number associated with it. And in this survey, one is not so good, and 10 is really good. Okay, whereas it says in here, one is of, uh, of no importance, and a 10 is of the utmost importance. But every one of the 32 items needs to have a number associated with it. Thank you. <laughs>
the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And may you forgive the iniquity of my sin. Glory be 
O Lord, let your merciful ears be open to the prayers of your humble servant, and grant that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And his ears were open. 
his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Our text is gospel lesson from the seventh chapter of Mark. In Jesus' name, Amen. If Jesus Christ had a Twitter account, he said he only had 600,000 followers. That's a drop in the bucket when you compare it to the over 100 million that Justin Bieber has. <laughs> Former President Barack Obama comes in in a respectable 90 million. And former President Donald Trump lagged way behind with 35 million until his account is closed. <laughs> Based on the gospel for today, it's safe to assume that Jesus would have had no interest in a Twitter. Rather, he seeks the rather than seeking attention and allocates to the crowds, we find Jesus doing quite the opposite. He takes the deaf and the mute man aside, away from the crowds, before he does anything in restoring his speech and his hearing. And then after the miracle, he tells all of those who are who have witnessed it not to tell anybody. That's bizarre behavior. Why would he perform a miracle in front of and then tell people not to talk about it. Because Jesus is concerned about the one, the one meek man, and the one demon-possessed girl. Jesus is so different from the famous people of our day. Our Lord sought to go away to a quiet place with the disciples, only to find that the crowds already beat him there. And then rather than rejecting the crowds, he has compassion upon them. He shows the same compassion to the deaf man as Jesus is always concerned about the one human being as well as hurting people. The Lord Jesus does not go around seeking great crowds because Mark says he often does quite the opposite. And yet he is the same Jesus in private <coughs> as he is in public. There are not two different personas for this Messiah. What you see is what you get in Jesus. He is just as concerned for the woman with the discharge of blood as he is for the daughter of the synagogue ruler. He's the same Jesus when he's alone with Peter, James, and John as he is with the crowd who ate the loaves and the fish. He's the same Jesus when the soldiers strike him and when the criminals insult him. He's the same Jesus always and forever. And Jesus' concern for the deaf and the mute is also a deep-seated love and concern for you. The one who touched the unclean and associated with tax collectors, prostitutes, even Gentiles, the concern for you and for the hurts and the pains that you bear. The one who looked that deaf and mute man right in the eye and touched his finger to the man's tongue comes to you with his mercy, to love and to forgive and to restore you. He still comes to open ears and release tongues. And he sets us free through the baptismal waters and the commanding word. He's concerned for the one who's held in bondage by addiction, by false social, yeah, ways of, of thinking. And he's also concerned about the one who is broken by guilt. Through the forgiving word of absolution, he still frees those who are held captive by their past. Yeah. What comfort yeah. that is for those who feel forgotten and alone. He doesn't forget the individual who comes.
comes to the table for that individual receives Jesus, his body, and his blood to restore you. Oh yeah, there were certainly crowds that were amazed by Jesus during his earthly ministry. But this reading from Mark reminds us that Jesus' larger concern is for each and every person. That's just the sort of Lord Jesus is. He does all things well, from obeying his parents to submitting to the laws of the land. Jesus is always the dutiful servant. As a teacher, he teaches his hearers what is good, right, and true. As a king, he shows mercy to the least and lowest. As savior, he comes to rescue those who are lost and forgotten. And Jesus can only do this good because he is God, and God is good. Therefore, wherever Jesus goes, he does what is good and pleasing to his heavenly Father. He always submits to his Father's will, and we confess that that will is very good. At the end of the Father's creating, the Father looked at all that he had done and <coughs> declared that it was good. After Jesus restored the Syrophoenician yeah. woman's daughter and the deaf and mute man, the people made the obvious observation, he does all things well. Yes, he does. And he doesn't stop doing all things well. He did it right up to the end when he cried out from the cross at his finish. He had completed his work of recreation and looked over what he'd done and declared that his work was complete and that it was good. And he still keeps doing good as he strengthens the weak and comforts the sorrowful and shows mercy to the forsaken and forgiveness to the contrite. Right now, today, we need to be reminded that Christ Jesus does all things well. When we suffer all sorts of hardships and difficulties, our Lord is still doing all things well. When the treatments do not bring the healing for which we have hoped, our Lord continues to do all things well as he grants the grace to endure the suffering. When we look around the world and see the violence and the terror and the hunger and disease, the flood and wildfires, we are comforted in knowing that our Lord is continuing to do all things well. He continues to accomplish his good and gracious will as his words proclaim. He continues to accomplish his good and gracious will as saints of God serve in their daily callings. As it is those various saints who serve their neighbors, volunteering to help disaster victims. And as the sick receive healing through doctors serving as God's instrument. As the hungry are fed by the service of countless Hands. Seeing evil in our world does not mean that Christ Jesus is not doing all things well anymore. On the contrary, in this evil world, he continues to break and hinder the plans of the devil and to, and to serve through his holy ones however and wherever they serve and usually without notice or fanfare. But Jesus does all things well, even when he shows us your sin and shows us your rebellion. He does all things well when you're called to repentance and he forgives you all of your sins for the sake of his death on the cross. Our Lord Jesus Christ did all things well during his earthly ministry 
and he continues to do all things well as his word is complained, proclaimed and as the church, his body, serves as his hands and his feet in the service of our world. As our Lord does all things well, he still shows care and concern for each person in need. Jesus does all things and does each person well. And this loving concern brings comfort and peace to each one of us as we endure the suffering in this world and as we look forward to Jesus' final good work of bringing us to the Father and the resurrection of the last day. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding to keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus God. Amen. <laughs>
Let us rise for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for all the mercies of God bestowed upon James in calling him to be his child in baptism, giving James forgiveness, life, and salvation, and for God's continued mercy upon Babs, his family, and all who mourn his earthly passing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for holy baptism, by which God has made waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the deserts of this world, and that he would open our eyes to new life in Christ and our ears to hear his word, free us to walk uprightly and loose our tongues in praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that God would preserve us from judgment with evil thoughts, especially from showing partiality and making distinctions among ourselves, and that he would make us rich in good works as we hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a lively faith in our Savior, that we would be fruitful and active in all good works, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For parents, that they would raise up their children to know Christ as their help and hope, and not put their trust in princes in whom there is no salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the President of these United States, for all rulers in this world, for our nation and the people of Afghanistan in this time of international crisis, that God, in whom alone we place all our hope, would bless leaders and people with mercy, order their plans for the welfare of the governed, and execute his justice for the oppressed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick named in our worship holder, for those in need that we express in our minds and hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of all mercy, we unworthy sinners come before you in fervent prayer for communities in our nation that are facing the plague of flood and fire. Grant strength and courage to those who stand in harm's way as you extend your hand of mercy for your creation through those who are fighting fires, the police, the aid organizations, the military, and those who protect and serve as health care and first responders those who have lost home and property through the fires and floods that rage in this state and nation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of all knowledge and wisdom for faithful pastors in this congregation, and for your promise to send a faithful shepherd for your flock in your good time, for the call committee that they be led by your Holy Spirit in their appointed task, for this congregation that our knowledge of why you give us pastors would be increased as we bow before your word in study. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who commune this day, that they would receive Christ's body and blood in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of sins and in the unity of a true confession, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Father everlasting God, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of his love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.